So I just drifted on up here to take a look at this really quick, and uh, if we don't send men, the Night's Watch is going to fall. And I, I don't think that's a huge deal, but I, I want to know what you think. So, so let me know, know down in the comment section, like right now. I know we just started, but like right now, let me know. Uh, do we send men north or not? Do we worry about it or not? Um, just because, I mean, we don't have the north anyways. The north isn't ours. Why would we care? So, but I digress. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Should we send men to the north to defend the wall? What's up, Bear Pack? Welcome back to another episode here in this custom house playthrough. I'm really excited to bring you this episode today. We have a lot to get done um, and a lot of things that need sorting out because these borders are atrocious. And if there's one thing I hate, um, a little less than fat faces on airs, it's bad borders. So what we're going to do, we're going to, I'm going to kind of explain my plan to you uh, going forward for this uh, series. So currently we are expanding and I don't know how long we'll expand for and I don't know at what point we will stop expanding. But what I do know is that we will uh, need to round out these borders in the proper way. That means we need to determine our borders to the north, we need to determine our borders to the south, and we need to determine our borders to the east. The west is taken care of, not worried about it. We do have this little pocket in the in the sea over here to worry about uh, but I'm not concerned about that for right now there's that will come up later but that's that's for a later time to decide so to the north this is what I'm thinking and you feel free to bash me in the comment section if you want to or agree with me I would prefer that but you know I digress I believe that our um, that our border should travel as far north as Moat Kalen and should extend, you know, Moat Kalen, uh, Silver Reed, and Greywater Watch should be part of the woods. There is an impassable set of mountains right here that kind of make a really nice border. Uh, so that's, this is my determination based on the natural border of things. Plus Moat Kalen itself sits right there. The county may extend further but Moat Kalen, the castle, sits right here. It doesn't make sense for Silver Reed to sit right here in the middle. Plus, Moat Kalen is a decent castle. It's a decent castle that we should, you know, we should at least look at taking. So, uh, I believe that that's where we'll set our northern border. So, to make that happen, because I don't have de jure ducal claims on any part of the north, I'm going to send my Justicear to fabricate claims right there in Moat Kalen. We will work out Greywater Watch after a little while, uh, but Moat Kalen, we're gonna define that northern border and then we're gonna work our way back in. Uh, that will also include all of these lands here in the Vale, which I should at some point in the near future, it, it just happened, we just created the empire, uh, or just created the kingdom title, should have de jure ducal claims over this area as well to take it from the north. Not gonna do that right now. Uh, we have a, we have more to worry about right now than, than any of that. So, next up on the list is this little stretch of land right here. It's three counties that are owned by this guy, King Garen the Mad of Runestone, and I, I mean, he's an Andal. I don't really care if he stays here, but I don't want him to, you know, I don't want, I don't want to have him messing my stuff up. So basically we need to dispose of him. So he's going to be our target number one today, but let, before we get into that, let me define the Southern borders for you. Uh, the Stormlands. We're going to take the Stormlands basically. That's what I'm saying. So, uh, that's our southern border is the Stormlands. I will at some point, and we've, I've kind of discussed this a little bit, um, I will at some point define the borders of the Stormlands, define the borders of the Vale, define the borders of the Rock, and then I will um, look at in the future, not this king, maybe not the next king, I don't know, but at some point in the future, I will grant them independence again, I believe. I don't like having an empire this big. 
Aegon is not a selfish person, not an ambitious person, but Aegon has the dragon. He's the first dragon rider for the woods. And it makes sense for him to have an expansionist mindset. And I believe Aegon being a diplomatic king, having the 19 diplomacy, you know what I mean? Aegon being a diplomatic king means that he wants to um, help safeguard and protect and establish a good kingdom in Westeros. It's not an everlasting kingdom. It's not a kingdom built on pride or anything like that. It's just a kingdom that exists for the sole purpose of um, basically propagating the old God's faith and also the goodwill of the first men. Um, and so that's, you know, protecting from the Andals, all of that kind of stuff kind of plays into this. I know the North, the Northmen are, you know, first men, um, but defining the nice borders is, is always what we want. There is an Andal king here in the Stormlands, and there is an Andal over here. So it, it makes sense in, in the lore for Aegon to be more uh, of the mindset that, you know, Andals stay over in, in Essos, leave Westeros alone, and in so doing, building up a very, very powerful army in the meantime. So, plus the dragon. I mean, the dragon goes without saying. So, first things first, we're going to declare war. Emancipation, what is that? We must set their slaves free. I don't want to do that. I want to, I want a dragon conquest. I think I have to wait for that to come up. I don't know how they practice slavery, though. Okay. There we go. Dejure claim on runestone. Uh, let's see. King Garen becomes a vassal. If we win, if we do this, it's the same thing. Or we can force vassalization. Either way, no, no matter what we do, we become their new liege. So he stays right there. I don't know that I like that, but that's a long-term thing, and we're we're do, we're doing a short-term solution to a long-term um, problem, basically. So, does your claim on Runestone? They will honor their obligations, I am sure. They have claws, the woods will join, the Dusklands will join, the Westerlands will join, Northwheel will join, Blackwood will join. There we go. Everything is good. I think, I don't know why my crown focus is right there in Longbow Hall. I don't want that. Um, typically I get that pop-up. I want it at the Bear Fort. But essentially... I'm going to take whatever army I can. How big is Strong Song? No. I need I need more men than that. Let's go ahead and raise up our men here in Bear Hall. I'm going to I'm going to command the vanguard on top atop the dragon. Desmond can be on that side and my my son Xavier can be on the left flank. And then we're going to march directly to Runestone. I there's no wasting time here. I'm not I'm not a, about gathering the armies or anything. I don't have to worry about that. We have a, a fairly powerful dragon. The dragon is maimed, so we're not going to be able to use it in the um, in the siege necessarily. But their garrison size is smaller than our army size, so we should be able to have a good chance of getting everything taken care of and accomplished before we have to worry about um, anything coming up. I just had something happened. Hold on. Um, trusting, do we want that? Intrigue minus two, diplomacy plus one, or charitable. We'd rather him be charitable, have a chance of it. He still became trusting. I'm telling you, RNG hates me, guys. Okay, so Valor Bear arrived at our court. So our daughter-in-law died under suspicious circumstances. And our heir is back in our court. That's a little crazy. That's a little strange, I'm just saying. So that means our grandson is currently the Lord of Seaguard, correct? Maybe not. Huh. 
Hello, where is our grandson then? He's with us, with our army. Okay, so we're good. He's not, he's not the lord of anywhere. That's good. I'd rather him not be a lord of any province right now because then I don't get to make any decisions regarding his future. Okay, so what we're also going to do is at the same time, we're going to command all of our allied armies to just come siege down this same province. Just He hasn't even raised his levies by the look of it, um, as far as I can tell. So we're just going to... The Kingdom of Eastwill is forfeit. That's weird. So I still have the okay, I still have the veil. High Lordship of East Wield, Lordship of Bear Hall, Lordship of Longbow Hall, Lordship of Breakstone. Okay, so I need to eventually Breakstone's right there, Longbow Hall's right there. I need to give these two provinces away along with the High Lordship and the Kingdom title of the Vale. And we, there was some good discussion down in the comments. I have a plan uh, for how I'm going to do that. We're going to have to wait till the Vale is complete before I go about doing that, though. I believe, anyways. So we're going to go ahead and siege this down. All these armies are actually listening to me. So they're all going to come and siege with me. We're going to... Um, yep. We're stacking all, all the men on their uh, their home province here. And like I said, I don't think he's doing anything. He's leading troops in Grandview. Oh, he took his he took his ship. Yeah, I don't know where he's going. He lost that battle. I wonder if I can raise up Oh, 1500 men right here. That's good. Commander Brendan of Tower of Dread. We'll take that. Along with, uh, let's go, Bradamar and Bennett. All the bees. And we'll go attack this army right here in Grandview. I wonder if I can cut them off. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with this army. I don't know why they're still traveling there. I, I, they're not really in Shattered Retreat. I'm not sure. I don't think they have ships down there. Maybe he's at war with them too. I need to check. So he's currently at war with... Oh. He's at war with the Red Watch Kings. He's helping press a claim for the Red Watch Kings. So that was a perfect timing on our behalf. I'm going to just disband this unit uh, once it reaches... Uh, our lands again. I don't. We don't. We don't need to chase them down. They're they're busy doing s other stuff. I'm not worried about them encroaching on our lands at the moment. But let's head back up to Runestone to take a look. We are suffering some attrition, but that's okay. I, I mean, the Vale is notorious for attrition, but we should be able to at least siege down their their castle and deal with it. We may not have an opportunity to. Uh, to send men to the north. Ah, uh, Brendan Whitesteel died, a sickly infant. One of our grandsons. Our other grandson is doing very, very well. I like this kid. And I think Whitesteel is going to gain a... is going to be another cadet house, quote-unquote. Um, but we're going to begin the process of making it uh, into something lore-based, if that makes any sense. So in a couple of years, I need to remind myself, I need to transfer him over to myself as his tutor because I want his, his learning is a little low. So I want my high learning to um, influence his education trait. I just need to remember to do that once before he... Uh... Oh, sweet. He was in his castle. Fantastic. Okay, so we're going to offer him peace. And... So now they're a part of what we have going on. We can disband this unit. I don't think we have any other units raised. By the looks of it, we do not. Who are you fighting? 
So there's a Faith of the Seven Revolt uh, in... Uh, looks like the Bay of Claws. So we may need to go handle that, but currently I don't think we need to. So we'll go ahead and advance. We'll reward our Septon. Is that what? No, that was our. Uh, oh, fantastic. So this is Prince Estian, who is Valor's son, is now a skilled fighter as well. He's deceitful, kind, and gluttonous, and a duelist. He's also willful, which is fantastic. Um, other than stubborn, willful is a great trait. Uh, he does have this stewardship focus. Not he came to me a little too late in that regard, but that's okay. I mean, we can we can maybe have a stewardship king. That's that would be fine. Eshin will make a great warrior. I will suffer no other kings. I don't care what you think about it. His heir is William of Yonstone. So I don't have any I don't have any issues with that. I don't know why it's giving me a vassal inheritance warning. We should get the opportunity uh, to restore our old council, at which point we're going to have to... I don't want to create the kingdom of the Triton. Yeah, we're going to have to deploy our master of... Uh, or our hand of the king again. Still waiting on that event to fire for the, the claim. Bay of Claws is still suffering... So we're going to go ahead and raise up this army. Uh, I will put Xavier there to help take care of it. Desmond on the other flank and Bennett on this side. They're going to Red Fork. So I'm going to wait till they make it to Red Fork before going there myself. I'm going to try to get around to this side so I don't suffer any crossing penalties. And they're going to Haraway's Town. So I'm just going to go ahead and go there. And pin them down. And they're running now, so I'm just going to chase them down. Um, and hopefully we can finish this before it becomes an issue, or too much of an issue. If I can defeat some of these armies ahead of time, then we should be in good shape uh, to bring Maiden Pool back into the fold. And then we can start to sort out all of the titles and all that kind of stuff. I don't have to worry about it too much right now because... Um, yeah, I don't have to worry about it too much right now because we are really not having to... Uh, I'm not having to worry about my sons coming and asking for titles because we're at war. But once we're out of war, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Uh, looks like this lady wants her bastard son to become a full member of her house. So we'll do that. We'll take the piety hit. This guy wants to join our court. He has really high learning. Decent other stats. But he doesn't have any congenital traits. And our court is full of that already. So we will pass for the time being. Okay, so we're going to take care of this war. And then I will be right back. So one of the things that I love about this custom house series that it's not just my custom house there's multiple custom houses that are kind of going on and I've been doing my best to get you guys involved as much as I can well uh, one of the ways that I'm going to do that and one of the ways that I've decided would be the best way to go about that is to uh, reward um, those of us who or those among my subscriber base you guys uh, who have been a very big part of you know, this series con contribution wise and all that kind of stuff. I feel like Aegon, in order to ease a lot of the tension, would uh, take this opportunity to grant landed titles associated with the Vale to Sir Lionel Redhorn. Now, I did re rename Redshore on his behalf, and that's okay. Uh, he, in exchange, uh, for the title of Redshore, will take up the entire kingdom of the the Vale up here. So basically, uh, we will need to do a little bit of rearranging, but there will be no Lord Paramount Owen of Northweald. That title will go away. The kingdom of Northweald will go away, and it will just be the kingdom of the Vale up here. It's going to take a little bit. I'm going to show the, uh, the at least the beginning process. I'm going to grant him the landed title of Longbow Hall, 
I'm also going to grant him the landed title of Breakstone. Then I'm also going to grant him the landed title of the High Lordship of Eastweald. And also the landed title of the Kingdom of the Vale. Lots of different stuff going on there. We're going to have to sort out some of the titles. Um, but, essentially, the Kingdom of the Vale is going to include all of this. It's not going to include this little part right here. That's going to go to the, to the Bay of Claws. But it will incorporate this Kingdom of Northfield. That's going to take some consoling. I'll be right back and we will get it sorted out. Okay, so we were able to go ahead and do that. We were able to destroy the Kingdom title of Northfield up here. And then we were able to go ahead and grant everything to King... We'll change to Lord Paramount. Uh, Lionel Redhorn of the Vale. So the Vale will have that right there. That will be good. Uh, they'll also incorporate Gold Town, but I took away Wickenden, which is now kind of it's his his direct liege is, is King Aegon. Um, so once Bay of Claws comes back into the fold, I think they're fighting their own war right now. Hopefully that ends quickly. I'll transfer him as a vassal to the Bay of Claws, so that'll round out that whole bay area right there, which will be great. I'm excited about that. I'm in the direct vassals view. If you guys like this, let me know down in the comment section. I actually like a little bit of the diversity, uh, and you can see the, the harsh borders um, where the kingdoms end, so to speak. So you can still see the kingdom borders, um, but you can now see where the different uh, vassals, vassal lines are drawn. So there's that. The, the thing that we're going to have to end up fixing, I think, is where the Dusklands go. I think the Dusklands, the line for the Dusklands is going to be drawn, uh, I'll have to see. I think maybe like here, these three counties will be included in the, in the Dusklands. And uh, Blackwater Rush, uh, Langward Hall, and Dalston Keep. And then the rest will go to the Stormlands eventually, once we bring them into the fold. Uh, but right now we need to do something a little bit different. We're going to award a High Lordship to Lord Paramount Dickon, who is, has been a faithful servant to the, uh, the Bears of Bear Hall for many, many years. Uh, so we're going to award him that High Lordship, and we're also going to transfer some vassals to him, um, Mossboro and Chattering Brook. Now that we're in this view, um, it's going to be kind of a, uh, it's kind of be an eyesore if we don't do that. Uh, so, Moose right here. And also, uh, where is it? Transfer Vassalage. Also Lord Rygar of House Roman. So there we go. So those will all become technically part of the woods. We need to find a new inhabitant for Redshore, and I think I have just the person for the for right now. It's going to be, um, it's it's going to be where is he? Right here, Adric of House Snowbear. So he is actually going to be the um, the new Lord of Redshore. Hopefully that doesn't change his his dynasty or anything like that. Uh, that'll be right there. He will be also a vassal of Lord Paramount Dickon. Where is he? Yep, so there's that, all of that. That kind of rounds out the God's Eye a little bit and, uh, and kind of defines the borders of the woods, the kingdom of the woods, uh, technically. Uh, all, all pretty good right there. The borders are looking nice. I'm okay with this. We still need to figure out... It'll look better once the Bay of Claws comes back into the fold. But we still need to figure out this south area. If we jump back over into the realms view, you can see this is where our borders lie. We kind of have this weird wonky stuff going on. And I don't know why, the t why Tarth isn't... Oh, it's because they're at war. Straits of Tarth slave raid on the Stormlands. So during the Mega War, while they were broken up, they probably, I guess because she's Valyrian, they practice slavery, and so she declared a slave raid on there, I guess. That's the case. In, I, in either case, we're going to set our crown focus in Bear Hall. I'm going to dismiss the upgrade holding stuff. Um, looking through, just making sure I don't have anything else to worry about up here. We need a new spy master. Why do we need a new spy master? What happened to our spy master? Oh, probably 
they're probably in this right here. Yeah. Okay. We need to designate a regent. Again, every time we go into war, we need to come back and designate a regent, I suppose. And all of this looks fine. I'm going to wait till they, till she approaches me about uh, stopping that war before I proceed. And we should be good. We should be good. I'm going to wait for them to come back into the fold before we jump back and, and accomplish our next goal. Well, uh, Dick, there's really nothing I can do about this. You went on and destroyed the High Lordship of Southstone. I don't know why. My king, we've had word from the Iron Isles that the Ironborn have held a king's moot to select their new ruler. Eldred Botley apparently emerged as the clear winner, with many lords and great warriors flocking to his cause. The drowned men have therefore crowned him as their new Iron King. Awesome. Pretty good character. Overall, I mean, 12 learning for the Ironborn is really, really good. And of House Botley as well. Not your typical house. And he doesn't have the Reaver trait, so I wonder if he's more of a, uh, you know, classic stay-at-home kind of guy. I don't know. The Iron Isles aren't, aren't looking that great in terms of the levies that they can raise. So um, maybe that'll influence us later on. I don't know. I don't know. What is happening here? Why, why do you keep declaring wars? I don't know why, why there are armies raised. He needs to hurry up and come back into the fold so I can give him this... Uh... It's this one right here, I believe. Yeah, it's this one. The, the Night's Watch needs to go ahead and lose. Because they're going to. I mean, look Look at all these men. Look at all these wildling men. There's no way. Uh, the no well, Actually, there is a way. The North is sending men to help. So uh, maybe the tides will turn, and that'll just take way too long. Good Lord. Okay, so rather than waiting on them to come back into the fold, because they eventually will, we're going to go ahead and... Um, we're going to go ahead and, and offer vassalization to Goldtown right here, and they will accept because uh, they are first men, and actually that is House Penrose, which is fantastic. Um, love that. And then there's also Witch Isle right here, which we will need to... I guess we can't because he's imprisoned. Oh, he's at, he needs to be at peace. Oh, look, King Lionel's already um, vassalizing him. Edric Weirwood has been a leal and able servant, having successfully completed many tasks in the aid of the woods. It would be seen as the right and honorable course to reward him with certain incomes and grants, so as to foster greater loyalty. Agreed. I agree with that. Okay, so Goldtown is now a part of what we have going on here. We need to transfer him to Breakstone. Transfer Vassalage. Uh, yep, Duncan Penrose to you. Perfect. And so he's going to go ahead and um, um, King uh, King Lionel. I don't know why it's still King. I don't. Ha I don't know if there's a way I can initiate that because it is the Kingdom tier title. Hopefully that'll change. Uh, but Lord Paramount, Lionel Redhorn, is going to uh, go ahead and vassalize uh, Witch Isle, which right there, which is good. We can uh, we can deal with that. Silver Reed. Oh, is actually a part of um, Bay of Claws. That's cool. I didn't I didn't realize that. But we still have our, our um, we still have our Justice R up here in Moat Kalen. Fabricating claims, which is fine. We need to figure out what to do next. And I think the next course of action is naturally to go ahead and bring the Stormlands into the fold. So they're currently... Um, oh, look. Arkan Illyrio of the Stepstones. The free city of the Stepstones is... Um, wow. Is conquesting the Stormlands. So yeah, we need to hurry up and do this. We need to hurry up and Dragon Conquest, because we have to beat them to the punch. 
Oh, come on. Why can't I? Nah, it's because the dragon's maimed by the look of it. Yeah, it's because our dragon's maimed, we can't dragon conquest them. But we can claim the Stormlands on behalf of this guy, who is a courtier, the Lady of Sunrise Keep, Lady Zaya. Where is she at? No, that won't that won't make it come under under us. Okay, so I don't actually have a claim that will give it to us. Okay. Well, then we need to figure it out. We need to either I guess we'll wait until the I guess we'll wait until the maiming goes away, and then if the stepstones have actually conquered it, then we'll figure out what to do at that point, I guess. But uh Can we vassalize this guy? Oh, of the broken arm. So this is actually a part of this. This is where it's going to start getting a little bit difficult because we're not just going to be able to Dragon Conquest. We're going to actually have to break it up and Conquest for that High Lordship, which I don't think we have a claim on. What is that the High Lordship of? It's the High Lordship of Red Watch. So... Nope. We don't. We'll have to get a claim on that. We'll have to get a claim on the Stormlands. Uh, hopefully, eventually, the Tarth will come back into the into the fold because our kingdom kind of wraps around all the way. Uh, Rainwood and all of that is going to have to come into the fold. But once we have the Stormlands, we'll be able to kind of... We'll, ha we'll have a de jure claim over it. So maybe we won't need to fabricate a claim on that High Lordship. We'll have kind of a de jure claim on it. All of that's going to have to be figured out once we come uh, once we come up back on it. I'll go ahead and, and do it for for the for the interim. I'll go ahead and appoint this girl as our master of whispers until Bay of Claws comes back. And I guess it's time to go ahead and focus our attention on the north I, until we get that claim. That's what we're going to have to do um, and defend the wall. Or I could just kind of say screw it and like not worry about it. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Just just not going to worry about it. Although, to be honest, I think Aegon would worry about it. Hmm. I do think Aegon would worry about it. But the dragon's not, not there, and Aegon's an old man. I'm going back and forth on this, and I know you guys are like sitting there like, oh, make a decision, but uh, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. And... We're going to stay in Bear Hall. 